Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a, another edition of JC3D. It's Monday, March 28th at about 11.30 a.m. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, here we go. a little guitar for you today just to get it going play the mood and we'll jump right into it so you can download this guide scene right here if you just go to the link down there in the description you'll be able to find it uh, where's my scene here pineapple float so you can get this scene right here if you click in the description I'll go to my Google Drive which was an idea suggested by one of the viewers. So if you have any ideas for me, please let me know. I'll try to implement them. Uh, people wanted to have the guides there so they could download them while I was working on it. So there you go. So this little object here, I'm just going to make sure that I've got it centered pretty good. You can see it's a little bit off there. So I'm going to go to uh, View Configure. And then down here in the, well, let's see, the back panel right here, this little tab right there. I'm just going to push it over a little bit like that. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Now, I don't really like to see the grid, so I'm going to turn that off right here with filter, work plane, and I also like to turn off the world axis right there. Boom. I just get a nice, fresh, clean screen there. Okay, so this thing here, first thing I'm going to do is this, this guy right here. So that, to me, the simple, simplest shape looks like a square here, like this which later on I'm going to do um, this little guy here, which is called the sweep. So I'll sweep a circle around it. My first thing I'm going to do is from this top view down is just kind of get the size of it. I can adjust it right here, increase it. So I'm kind of trying to go for the center of that tube that's going around the whole uh, pineapple float there. Something like that. Sometimes I'll just scale it down, you know, like this. Okay, and then I want to go sideways, like this. I want to be in the center, something like that. And then you see these corners right here? If you click on rounding, like that, you're going to get the nice round corner right there. And if you change this setting, the radius, it'll change how big it is. You get it to match that radius of the, the guide. So now what I'll do is get a circle, like that. Then grab that sweep right here. Put the two of them as children. The circle needs to be on top. And then just scale the circle down. Somewhere like in there. There we go. Okay, now. I've got a bunch of these little tubes here. All right. So let's see. Oh, what I could do. Thinking that this might work out, you know, I could make one of these, make a cloner, but I'm thinking I might also be able to make uh, a plane here that I could extrude after. So that's going to be my approach. So going like this. Then what I want to do is I want to match those subdivisions right there. So I'll get the height right. And then these lines here, they're pretty close, but they go off. So let's see. I've got 10 of them. Is that right? Okay, let me try eight. Okay, that looks like it was the wrong way. So I'm gonna try to go to 11 maybe. Similar, but they're too short, let's see. It could be that my guide's not like perfectly lined up. So I just have to kind of get it close enough. What I could always do is count those. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. Let's see. I'm not sure if I can, can I subdivide this into nine? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, okay. So then I'm just going to kind of get this to be about the right size. Like this. Like there. 
now, if I current state that to an object, what it'll do is I'll be able to see each one of those polygons right there. So if I do that, convert it to an object right here, this is this little object down here, like that. Now if I go into face mode, I'm gonna get all these as faces. So I can select them all, and then I can hit the hotkey D. Now if I just go out here into the void and just click and drag, it's gonna do one of these, which I don't really want. I want each one to go individually. So if you wanna do that, all you have to do is you see down here where it says, so you hit the hotkey D, and then the attribute manager over here, it says preserve groups. So that's it thinks of it all as one group that's gonna extrude. Now if you uncheck that, when you go out here in the void and you click and drag, it's gonna do each one individually. Uh, let's see, it's hard to see, you can see it better when I go that way, because there's little shelves right now. Now if I go out to here like this, if I put this underneath the subdivision surface, it's gonna smooth that out like that. That looks pretty close to what I'm looking for. Like that. Okay. Now I did have, um, I just selected all right there. And I'm hitting option G to group it so I can hide everything with one little click like that. That lets me kind of come down here and look at my guide. So it's got these little seeds right here. That's, um, it looks like something maybe in the texturing. So let's see, if I wanna recreate that, um, I'm just trying to think of the best way for me to do it. You know, you could apply this whole texture to it, but really what I'm looking to get is these white guys here and this strip there. I can make this strip with a gradient, um, but these guys here might be a little tricky. So I think for these, you know, what I might do to make them is I might just make a texture. So if I save the scene real quick, and then if I save it again, I'll call it um, seed text. So I know this scene here, I'm just using it to make these seeds, right? So then I'll go here. Should only have to do one side. And I'm gonna make sure I'm in object mode so I can get my drawing tool going like this. And then I'm just gonna go here and start to draw. I don't think there's much harm right now for me to just do them all together. If you click here, you get a bunch of individual ones. Um, in this instance, I don't think I need to do that. So I'm just gonna keep them all as this one object. So you see, it'll just keep this one spline. Even though it's a closed spline, now I'm just gonna add to that like this. Boom. Same deal here. I'm just kind of going around the horn, sort of a re repetitive process here. I could copy them, but it's not too bad. Each one might be like a little bit different, so I'm just going to trace them out. One, two, three in the corner like that. These corners are a little bigger, so yeah, trace them out a little bit more. Get my inner tip there. If anybody wants to do a one-on-one -on -one lesson, I've got a few students that I do that with. We just use uh, Zoom. It allows you to share the screen. Similar experience to this uh, YouTube when you're watching me on YouTube. And you see your face and my face in a little corner. We can share each other's screens. You can operate each other's mi mice, but it doesn't work too great. So you end up kind of emailing back and forth, sharing your screen while you're working in cinema or watching the student while they're working and just kind of coaching them, helping along. Um, a lot of 3D is kind of like you self-teach yourself, but it helps people. It helps to have someone there you can ask a question, and then they're like, "All right, here's how you do it," and then you have access to that. Um, I had the person named Tomas Marinello, and for Cinema 4D, I was a soft Dimash user. So when I went to try to get my job, um, I had to use Cinema 4D. I've never never used it before, and to get the job, I had to sit down and use the program. 
So while uh, the boss, Neil Adams, walked out of the room, Tomas came over, sat in my chair, and he showed me how to use the program. And he did the demo job for me and walked me through it. And then when Neil Adams walked back in the room, he happened to see me sitting in the seat and saw that I had created in Cinema 4D the little thing he wanted, even though Tomas had made it. And then that's how I got my job. And so I had to kind of quickly learn um, to keep my job, how the program worked. So here, now it's my favorite program, though. It's off Tomas, is obsolete. So let's see. B spline. Boom. Put the B spline there. It made everything nice and smooth like that. And remember, this scene here I'm using, I'm just going to create a texture. So now what I want to do to get that thickness right there is um, just go right here and grab like a, a rectangle. Then we're going to use that sweep again right there. Now drop the rectangle in the spline underneath the sweep. Make sure the rectangle is on top. And then you need to, you're always going to need to scale it down. So go like that. Boom. And I'm just going to kind of get in there, look at my guide. I want it about yay big ish. Um, let's see. I guess while I'm in here, I might as well get this little stripe down the middle. These are all just going to become uh, white. Let's see. I'm just going to current state this to an object because it's a little easier to manipulate. There we go. Oops, here we go. Scale it up. Okay. Like this. Actually, maybe I want to nail that. Oh, let's just spin that one object. So it should be okay. I'm going to overshoot it a little bit here. Like that. Now I got to get all these over here. I'm going to do that with a symmetry tool. Right down. Where the heck is it? Does anybody see it? Oh, there it is, right there. Symmetry. All right, drag and drop your sweep under that. And you're going to get on that side. Now, I just want to give it a solid color. So I'm going to go uh, white, but in the luminance channel like that. And then the background, I'll do... Well, let's leave the background alone. Okay, so let's see, render. Whoops. Hide this. Render again. And now I get that, but I didn't draw my texture on it. So here you go. Boom, boom. Hit render. Okay, that looks all right. Now, make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to hit render. And I'm just going to take a screen grab of this. Let's see. Save this scene. Shut it. I'm going to go back and grab my uh, scene that I had been working on. That was the 3D modeling scene here. And then... What I want to do is just go in here and make a texture folder. This is my main scene that I'm working out of. So I just put a folder called TEX. Now on my desktop, I've got this screen grab. I'm just going to drag and drop that into the text folder. And you know, I can give it a name. I can call it Seeds, so I know what it is. And then drag and drop. Well, I want to make a white color here. And then I'm going to go into Alpha. I'm going to add that file. Drag and drop it there like that. Boom. Now is it working? It's not really working for me. It's something like, oh, that there, it's working now. You kind of have to play with those depending on like if you have an actual alpha or if it's not an alpha. This one shouldn't have an alpha in there in the PNG. So here we go. Switch this view to shading. So I kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better. Mm, maybe scale that up just a little bit like that. So it fits on that tube a little better. There we go. Then just drag and drop this onto that. Okay, so it's showing through. So this needs to be inverted, I think. Is that right? I should just take a solid color here and, and maybe I can put it underneath that. No. Okay. Why is it showing me the guide? The guide's kind of throwing me off, so I'm just going to shut the guide off for a second. You can see what I'm doing. Okay, so it's just going invisible there. So I do want to invert that, I think. Is that right? No, no, no. That should be actually perfect. What I don't want, maybe, is this. Uh, do I want luminance? Yeah, there we go. 
see how this looks. So now this is a trick is I've got to put the color under it. So let me get this guy back in here and sample that color. Let's grab a yellow. Okay, whoops. Grab a yellow somewhere. Okay. And then throw it underneath it. So make sure make sure this is to the right. And then they should go on top like that. Now what I need to do is get them aligned a little better. So you can put them on um, flat. And then you can go up here to this tool, fit to region, and just draw the region right around here like that. And you get them to pop on the sides like that. And if you want to change them, this little tool up here is the UV editor. So you can move that up and down like this. And you can scale it too like that. So then this piece up here, let's see. I'm thinking the way I'm going to approach this one might be um, just use the polygon pen. So the polygon pen's right here. It's similar to when you're drawing the outlines, except with this one, you can just draw polygons like this. Like that. Now that's just a flat plane, but you can start to build your way around. Now I gotta actually decide was that was that wise or just should I do it like this maybe? Oops. So I could have gone more straight down like that. From here to here like that. Oops. Like that. I'm gonna go back after and I'll straighten these little edges out. Let's see if we can get away with going all the way down here. You can always go back here and subdivide this line. Okay. Let's see if this works. Do, 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 do. I'm going to subdivide it right here and maybe go in right there. Okay, so a couple things. I'll go in here and I'll straighten this out. Scale it like this. Oops, hold down this one. You can go into your coordinate manager too. Like, see, so X, you can zero that out so it's perfectly on the zero. That way, when you symmetry it later, it'll be, it won't overlap. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I think that actually might work like this. Let me just try a test. If I grab um, all these polygons, throw them underneath this subdivision surface, select them all, hit the hotkey D. Now in this case, make sure you put this back on, preserve groups. I'm gonna go ahead and fall. Now let's see, can I make this these two shapes out of this one? Put the two together, that stops working, but if you put them underneath a, a null like this, they'll work again. Let's see how hard it would be just to make this out of this. You can make this see-through to help you see your guide better, like this. And make sure you click on the object so you can see the points like that. And go like this. Boom, boom. And what's going on here? So this is like a little bit tighter there. Da -da -da -da. Sort of a little fudgy right here, but let's see. So if I want to get this edge right here, I think if I subdivide right here, let's see, select, I think you can do this little um Mesh cut loop path cut like this. You hold shift, it'll find the middle. So I could try the middle there like that. Now that might hold that there, and I could grab the point down here like this and pull it over here. Do, 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 do. Take 
this one, copy that. Up there. And just go in here really quick and move these points around. Then what I'm going to do next is delete all these planes that are on the inside so that I can mirror it. that and then select all these like this then I'm just gonna go over here to my face tool now the way this selector works is you got to put the box around whatever polygons you want to select and then when you let go it selects them so then in this case while they're selected let me just scale them boom and then hit delete okay now when I put the the symmetry tool here it should fuse together like that Got some weird little thing going on right there. But maybe if I Oh, you know what? Looks like I don't have any backs on these, so So what I'm going to do, I need to put backs on them all, is uh, I'm going to go to the top view. And I'm going to select these polygons right here. So those are all the ones I'm looking to bring to the back. Now I'm going to copy this and paste it. With these here, I'm going to go select, invert, and delete those. And then this here, I'm going to move back to here. Put them really close together like that. Now, let's see, will this work? Okay, I might have to do these onesie twosie. So let me just start off with this one. So I'll take the bottom one here, fuse it together, connect objects and delete. Now, if you were to put this one underneath the subdivision surface right now, it's gonna look weird on the back, watch. See the back stays straight. It's not the end of the world, but if you take this guy right here and you select all these points like this, and then if you go up to Mesh, Remove, Optimize, and the tolerance here, now they might not be perfect, perfectly on top of each other. They have to be right on top of each other here. So what I could do for this, I might go like point 0.1 and see if that's good. If it's bad, it'll fuse too many together. But let me just see if that works. I know it can't be zero. Okay, I think that worked. Now watch what happens if I put the hypergrip on. See, it smooths that. So it's actually interpolating the curve there better. So now to get the back, you know, not perfectly flat, I can go in here and I can select these guys and just hit the hotkey D. I gotta just get this side. Um, top view is, is an easy way to select it. So I'll go up there, go like this, hit these. Now let's see, are they flat already? Let me just double check. I can I can scale it down like this, and then I can hit the hotkey D, move it out. Now it's kind of flat, not as round as the top, but you know that's what I'm looking for. So it's going to do that process two more times. So I'm going to bring this one up here, this guy and this guy. These two, fuse them together, connect objects and delete. I'm going to go select all the points. I'm going to go to mesh, remove, optimize. I got it set to point one. Boom. Now, hypothetically, I put this underneath this uh, subdivision surface right here. And smooths like I want it to. Go here, I'm gonna use the top view to do my selection. I can, it already is at zero there, so I'm just gonna hit the hotkey D, boom, like that. That's one below it. And then my final one right here, boom, boom. Connect objects and delete. Select all those points. Go up to mesh, remove, optimize. Keep it on a point one. Now uh, this guy here should be connected where they're fused. Go back into the face mode. Select just the back ones there, hit the hotkey D, and move back the wall like that. Boom. One, two, three. Let me turn on the um, symmetry tool here. See if this works. 
All right, looks pretty good. And we just select all these and kind of look at it from this view here. Boink. Um, how is it hooked on here? Make sure that this here looks good. And whoops. The bottom one. Let's see, we want to select that like this. Hit R T D. Okay. Now you're gonna get these things here. We can just delete it like this. Oh, that's a little weird. Why'd it do that? Why'd it do that? Maybe the best move would be just to move it down a little like that. There we go. All right, so I want to get that green. I got a couple of textures right here. I'm going to just save this scene. Pop over to my text scene here. Go up there. Just add those real quick. clicking here and dragging to make it go like that I usually don't do that but in this instance I'm gonna go for it More here we go. Definitely make more complex shapes with less points when you do it like this. Bezier curve approach. Now for this one here, I'm just going to take this and go uh, extrude right here, pop that there, boom, and then let's see, put that same white texture on it, I think, hit render, okay, I've got that, but then what I want to do is have that symmetry tool up there. It's a little bit off, but I think I'm just going to go for it, okay, take a screen grab of that. Save that scene, shut her down. Go back in here, hit this little magic orb, crystal ball. That's your textures. Now uh, the, the screen grab went to the desktop, so I gotta go collect it from there. Boom. Oh, what do you call the top of the pineapple? I have no idea. Oh, let's just call it uh, top text. Throw that in there. Now this one I've already kind of fiddled around. I got it to where it was working. So I'm just gonna copy that one and swap out the alpha. Boom. This wants to go onto this. We wanna go tag. Whoops, sorry, first I'm gonna do flat. Tag hit the region. And draw it around the box. I'm looking ahead here. Boom. And what's this thing doing? Oh, it's still got the same texture. I put the wrong texture on this one. There we go. Now we copy this, make it green. Just hit this little selector tool. I can select right off that image like that. Drag that underneath it. So to the left. There we go. Now I just got to line it up. And these also wanted to be black. So if you change this color here to black and this color to black, they'll go black. And then here want to go to my UV editor tool. This allows you to move it around like this. And let's see, is this window very good? This window's tough because it's see-through, so let's get rid of that, the x-ray. And then go back. And scale it down. What's it want to be? Something like Kind of like line these up a little bit better. Huh. 
And then let's see about this texturing here. So I'm going to go over to configure. I'm going to move this guy over. Look at that. Let me see if I've got some kind of a. I don't know if I, from memory, if I have a see-through plastic. Let's see. You can do, you can you can make things see-through right in here and add a transparency. And then it has these sort of pull-downs. And I think PET, I think that's like supposed to be plastic. Um, so let's see, I could try that. Now right away, it kind of took that yellow away. So I might want to copy this and then put it a little bit in here. Paste. Will that work? Let me see. So let me just go save this scene. I don't really have this set up with um, an HDR. So I'm going to go grab another one from the previous model. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see this Lego wheel. So let's check this scene out. Uh, there's a Lego wheel. So let me get rid of that. Delete any of these materials. And then paste in my model here. Okay. I'm just going to save it real quick. Pineapple float number two. Okay. Let's get a look at this guy. So what's it look like when it renders right now? Let me check the settings here. Function, physical, turn this on. And then I need to actually grab this little image, this texture, this right here. So I'm gonna copy that and put it on my clipboard and then bring it into the scene I'm working in. Hit the paste. Right there. Okay, so now if I hit render, I should see this thing. Let me see what my first random little uh, attempt at the plastic looks like now. It actually doesn't look too bad. But it does a little bit something funky within here. Oh, I think I know why. This object here doesn't have, uh, it's not watertight. So watch what happens to the texture when I take this right here. I'm just going to copy this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it underneath a null. So I'm going to copy that, put in a new scene, paste it. What that lets me do is I can zero this out. And it'll look straight while I'm working. But then I bring it back into that scene. It'll go back to where I wanted the line as long as I keep that null there. So what I'm looking to do is similar to what I was doing with those other guys. I'm going to take this thing off. And I'm going to select these guys here. Copy and paste. But I only want the front ones. So I'm going to go like this. And I don't really think here, do, 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 yeah, this should work. So I'm going to go here, move this back. Um, yeah, I only want to select these front ones here because I'm going to put them on the back. That, wait, where are you? It's just you and these guys. There we go. So we're just going over in the front, select invert, delete everything else. Copy that. I might be able to get rid of this so it's clear. Copy that, bring it to the back as close as I can. Like so. And then, now you see right now, these are actually individual right now. So before I connect it to the other one, because watch, if I were to hit the hockey D and extrude, they're all individual. It's the way the computer's thinking about it because of the way that I did it before. So to connect them all, before I current, you know, connect it to that other plane, I'm going to run an optimization on it itself and just say remove, um, optimize. And now I'm going to put point one because I don't know if I perfectly lined them up with each other. I hit OK. Now when I hit the hotkey D, it's all one. Wait, is it together? No, it's not. Okay, so maybe I've got to increase my tolerance. Um, let's try that one. Or maybe, let me see here. Mesh, remove, optimize. So what if I do point five? Okay, so now I hit all the faces. Hit the hotkey D. Huh, they're still not sticking together. All right, well, I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe it's, uh, let me just look one more time. Remove.
remove, optimize. So it says polygons, hmm, unused points, points. I mean, I really just wanted points. It's got preserved groups only. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I'm not quite sure. So I'm just going to try to do it anyway and see if I get lucky. So I'll put the two together here. Grab them, current state, connect objects, and delete. Now, select all these points. Um, you know what? I don't think that's going to work, actually. Sorry. Let's go back here. There's another way that I can do it. I can just go here like this and um, bridge these. But now, is that going to connect it to that? Let's just see what happens. I'm going to go into my line mode. I'm going to go to mesh, add, bridge. And then I'll just go like this and connect them like that from side to side. Boom, 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 boom. Now what's going to happen when I turn this on? Mm, does that. It's not really what I wanted. That's a tricky one. This is a tricky one, folks. Let's see. I'm going to do these. Here's what I'm going to try next. Um, I'm going to so I'm going to go in my line mode. I'm going to select loop like this. And just select this back ring like that. I'm going to hit the hotkey D like this. Oh, did that work? Hotkey D. Let's true. A little bit. Try to keep it the same. Just move that back. Okay. Now I'm going to run one of these. Um, Fill polygon holes. Let's see if this works. Close polygon hole right there. Now, is that going to keep the back good? Yeah, that's more what I was looking for. And what this is going to do, when I bring this back into the scene, it's going to render a little different because it's now a watertight object. Now, I don't know about the texture going on the back like that. If you don't want that to happen, you want the texture not to be on the back, go in here like this, select just the front like that. I got it all and then um, make a set selection right here you go select store selection and give it a name like seeds and then um, go down to there and then when it says selection here just put in seeds and then ooh, look at that it didn't go anywhere <laughs> okay let's see did I spell it right copy Strange. There's another way to do it is um wait, why is it not working there? I'm not quite sure. Let me see. Let me just get that out of there. Now if you can do it like this too, if you've got them all selected. The polygons, you can is that the sun I want? Yeah, you can just drag and drop. Dude, why do oh it's because I have this. This is a one a funky thing, but I think it's because I have that subdivision surface on. So I'm gonna go like this, drag and drop. Wow, look at that. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. It should have. You, typically, what it'll do is it'll make a set selection when you do that move. When you drag and drop on uh, the object like that, you'll see a set selection pop up, but it's not doing it for some reason. I'm not quite sure why that is. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. We'll just pretend like the seeds are on the bottom too for now. So we'll go back into the scene here. Swap this out. So now I, that null there, delete the children, and then paste this one in. Use your coordinate manager. Make sure you're in object mode up here. And just zero this out. And it pops right in like that. Now let's hit render. It was a little too see-through, right? So let's see. I'm taking a try to turn the transparency down a little bit. I'll add it to the green one, and then I think we're, we should be good to go here. Okay. So let's see what happens when I just turn that transparency way down. Do -do 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 -do. Mm -hmm. Hey, that looks pretty cool to me. 
I like that. All right. So what I'm going to do, since I'm kind of like the way that that looks, is I'll just take this, copy and paste it, grab my green color here, like that, uh, copy. Then just go into this one that has that kind of right look for me, and then hit paste. And I think, did I put it in here too? Yeah, paste right there. And get rid of that one. And then you see where those question mark is right there? Just drag that on the question mark, like that. Mm, let's take a look. Thank you very much for watching today. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments. Um, I'm not sophisticated yet where I can actually see the comments, but, um, you know, I do um, try to respond to them if I can. And also this model will be available to purchase on TurboSquid. All the models I've been putting up um, have been selling very well. So if anybody has any ideas, you know, you can help make the process smoother for you. Let me know. Um, yeah, please like and subscribe. Anybody you can think of that would like the channel, let them know about it. All right, this is rendering. The green's looking pretty cool to me up there. You know, it's a little bit kind of bright, but I kind of like that, you know, if it's in the sun or something. Sometimes I'll take this light here and turn it off if it's kind of getting, like, looking blown out. You know, if I would have put that in on the scene with the wheel, the Lego wheel, because maybe it was a darker one. So really quick, let's see what it looks like with that light turned off. And maybe it'll look just right. Now this 3D model I'm actually going to use for a music video. I had gotten some advice from um, a manager in Hollywood, Shannon O'Shea. And she said, you know, what you really got to do to get out there is put 3D animation to your songs. And the, almost like the animation is, is the primary focal point and the music secondary. And I probably spoke to her right before coronavirus. And it's taken me literally years to kind of like soak in <laughs> what she said. And the idea was basically like, you know, make this animation, but I've had a hard time doing it. So this attempt right here is really, I'm going to try to use this in a music video. And I have the one shot. Um, there's a person sitting right there. The lyrics like, I saw you in the sun. Your skin was glistening. So for that one part of the song, there's this 3D animation and there's a woman on here with sunglasses on and she just goes by. And that's the idea. So I'm hoping I'll get some more inspiration. Um, maybe some of you guys can help me out. Help me think of a story and I can make some more 3D models and then populate the music video with it. Um, that'd be awesome. So let me know. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with any luck. All right, take care. Bye.